years, the northeastern province of Kenya has suffered from many calamities, both man-made and natural. This region, which is generally arid, suffers from recurrent drought, forcing the nomadic inhabitants to move from place to place in search of pasture and water for their animals. Hawa jamii wa Somali si jamii ambaye wanategemea boda ama hawasemi hii boda ni ya Kenya ama Somalia ni wanaangalia tu mifugo yao wakati kuna ukamo ya Kenya wanahama Somalia wakipata huko ukame pia wanaenda Ethiopia kwa hivyo ni jamii ya kuhama hama These relocations in many cases result to armed conflict In the years following Kenya's independence the Somali inhabitants of the northeastern province, formerly known as the Northern Frontier Districts, had tough choices to make. Some sections of the community wanted the province to be part of the present-day Somalia, while others opted to remain a part of Kenya. What followed was a bloody conflict, pitching the Kenyan government on one side and the Shifter rebels on the other the result of which left many of the Kenyan Somalis suffering at the hands of both the shifters and their own government. Yuko watu wame, amoka vijana wameenda, wanamechukua bunduki. Sasa walanzo kuriri hapa kupiga sirkali, askari ya sirkali, na wanenchi kwa moja. Hata wanenchi wasa wanaweza pora maali yao kwa zaba kuwana maali ya ukulia. Lazima ukule ni maali ya wanenchi. In this region where resources are ever scarce, Many a times, different clans end up arming themselves to protect their animals and fight other clans in case of an invasion. In a bid to stop the hostilities, the government sent military personnel to recover the illegal arms. However, this too ended up bringing more pain to many people due to the massive losses of lives in the hands of military operatives. Different military operations in the northeastern province have ended up becoming massacres due to the large number of people, most of whom are innocent, losing their lives. Such massacres include Wagala in Wajir, Malkamari in Mandera, and the Bagala in Garissa. Nikakumbuka tu vile watu walikuwa wamemalizwa hapa Wagala ilikuwa tarehe 10 mwezi wa pili 1984 ambaye askari walikuja tu na kusanya watu kutoka kila mahali watu wameleta tu hapa na kusanya watu hapa tu bila hata yani kujua ni kitu gani kinaendelea baada ya watu wakatolewa nguo wakalalishwa watu hapa kwa hii maram na unajua tu vile jua ilikuwa kali watu wakalalishwa bila nguo mtu akaanza kuleta tu maneno kidogo tu basi anagonga tu na askari tu kila mahali hapa ilikuwa askari tu ndio sasa watu walikaa tu tarehe 10 tarehe 11 tarehe 12 watu sasa walishindwa kukaa wakaanza kila mtu akaanza kutoroka tu wale ambao walikuwa kwa sababu wengi wameanza kufa na wengine walikuwa matuti wale walikuwa kidogo tu vijana vijana wakaanza kutoroka tu ndio sasa kila mtu alipigwa risasi nini yani mimi nikukumbuka tu wagala tarehe hiyo ni kitu ambaye hata siwezi kusahau Due to this protracted violence that emanates from changing environmental conditions such as drought and floods, as well as violent conflicts, the northeastern province communities have suffered a lot of traumatic events that have left some of them hopeless from generation to generation. Many of these victims do not have a clear understanding of what they have been suffering from, let alone where to find help. Such unresolved trauma within individuals and between conflict-affected communities drives repeated cycles of violence. Groups in this situation affected by past violence manifest high levels of insecurity in their group identity, a reliance on selective historical memory and utilization of stereotypes and prejudices in their perspectives towards others as well as a militarized mentality. This presents a challenge for sustained social reconciliation. Until recently, we could not realize that trauma is one of the things that contribute to the vicious cycle of conflict. Because people live with trauma, they stay up, then ultimately somebody, suddenly somebody thinks of carrying out a revenge because of that trauma. With the descriptions that the community, uh, Somali community came up with, we soon began to realize that uh, people were actually talking about the deeply infiltrated uh, pain, anger, and the need to readdress people's uh, narratives in a manner that will then help them um, come up with 
justifiable means towards reconciliation even amongst them as the Somali communities. Peace 2, a joint program of Pact Inc. and Pact Kenya, funded by the U.S. aid, has been working with partners within the Somali cluster, promoting peace as well as conducting trauma awareness and healing processes. This program has been aiming at empowerment of the community through training of trainers who are given the mandate of teaching other community members on the need for peaceful conflict resolution as well as understanding how prolonged conflict brings about trauma and the path to trauma healing. In the training of trainers we brought on board teachers, religious leaders, youth, women, and to some extent some elders, though the, 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 the facilitation was done in English, but we had opportunity of some few people translating. And uh, why we wanted that is that these are the people who are with the people on daily basis. Whenever there is a conflict, the provincial administration officers, such as the chiefs, are the ones who are at the face of the fire. They are always the first people who communities turn to for assistance. There has been need, therefore, to train these officers to understand trauma and the effects of it in order to be able to help the community to handle traumatic events. From a stand chief to the PC, and by always kill the kids as I in answer, who and who get you out, kill the kids as I in a good job, kill the kids as I want to let her report it. As I'm always masked with you, what a scare to gain what is going to what is going to happen and what are you going to be told. Utasikia kuna kesi hasa nimekuwa mali moja unasikia kuna watu wameanza kupigana kwa malisho kuna watu majemi gani yani siku moja ukikaa bila kukalia kesi lazima siku ya pili utakalia na utaelezwa mambo ambayo machungu so ni wale watu ambayo always wako under trauma provincial administration ndio wako under trauma always in the somali trauma experience women have continued to be the most affected due to cultural beliefs and practices as well as the violent conflicts that occur from time to time. In some cases, family members and close relatives are the inflictors of some of these traumatic events. This is as a result of denial of their rights and the undermining of the role of women in the society. However, due to a culture where women are not empowered enough to speak up, they continue to suffer in silence. Uchunga meningia wakati wa 1992. Wakati nilimaliza shule. Daraza la nane. Na mbaba kasema. Ati umusiana wezi soma. Wacha wavulana ndio watasoma. Iyo uchunga meningia paka nikapotea. Nikachoma hata nyumba. The people who hold the society. When men are killed in the violence. Who holds the, the community? It's the women. And the women carry the burden of what they have seen, what they have gone through, and yet they cannot talk about it. One of the important elements of healing the trauma and reconciling socially is for one to talk about it. The Trauma Awareness and Healing Program is creating friendly spaces for the women where they can openly share their experiences with their male counterparts and thus helping them to begin the all-important journey towards healing. Nilipochua tu hiyo mambo ya kujidiliana hiyo uchungu ya roho nikasikia nikaona mimi kumbe nilikuwa niko na hasira vibaya karibu kumsamea hiyo baba yangu kwa hiyo mkutano nilifahamu mengi vile wao watu walitufunza mambo ya kutoa uchungu kwa moyo walitufunza vizuri paka saa hii the northeastern province, which borders both Somalia to the east and Ethiopia to the north, has experienced a lot of cross-border conflict-related issues. This is due to the fact that pastoralists from either countries cross their borders in search of pasture and water for their animals, resulting in recurrent attacks and counter-attacks over the scarce resources from either side. In order to reduce these hostilities, a cross-border peace dividends initiative where different communities share resources on either side of the border has been established. Peace 2 theory of change believes that by co-managing and sharing tangible peace dividend projects, cross-border communities will develop strategic relationships and long-lasting structures providing the basis for a joint response when faced with violent conflict in the future. 
In addition to the resource sharing, communities from either side of the border are trained through workshops on skills for conflict transformation and reducing hostilities among themselves. As a part of the uh, trauma program, there is a peace dividend you know, a programs or projects uh, in our area, uh, like uh, Borhawa, we, uh, we have rehabilitated you know, uh, water kiosks. And uh, now uh, we are planning to uh, build a small dispensary. This dividend project is going on in Mandera and the other side of Kenya. Projects have been established along the border uh, to, create, uh, to create relations between the people living on both sides of the border. This includes schools, uh, tanks, dams, uh, so that any a person from the other side can easily cross the border, use the resources on this side. People from Somalia cross to Kenya to get education, people from Kenya might cross to that side, get medication, and so on. And this is necessary because this is going to create a purpose of, a purpose of uniting these people. They will have a reason. So that if anybody on the other side decides to create a problem on these sides, their own kinsmen will stop them because they have they gained from the other side. So it has helped a lot in healing and that has created the individuals to be able to forgive, live with one another. In the trauma healing and awareness training, much attention is mainly given on making trauma easily understandable within the Somali context so that the people can identify with it and relate it to their own situation. In the Somali language, Trauma is known as tiranyo, or simply put, great pain. Zamani tulikuwa tunazisha wale waze waze, lakini sukisi tunawaita hawa vijana ambaye wanaweka uchuki mingi kwa roho yao, tunambia hawa wasifanya hivi, tunatuliza hawa, tunaleta hawa pamoja. The trauma healing and awareness training appreciates the fact that the Somali communities have for a long time had their own traditional and religious ways that they use for conflict resolution. The training therefore involves merging the Islamic teachings on conflict resolution, the Somali's traditional methods of resolving conflict, and the creation of friendly spaces where community members can open up and speak freely about their suffering, thus creating an atmosphere for forgiveness and complete healing. We went back to the book, the holy book, that is, and we went back to our, our traditional way of life. That is how we managed the, you know, the conflict that we had. Trauma healing and awareness training is helping the Somali communities to identify and be aware of their traumas and their causes, as well as working out solutions that will go a long way in helping them to tackle any future traumatic experiences. However, a lot more still needs to be done to reach the very many people who are still in dire need. The good thing with the tra trauma healing is that it helps the affected parties in the identification of the issues that are affecting them and come up with solutions. Like if it's about two parties who have been in conflict, they really, the best thing is for them to sit down, identify issues. Why have we been fighting? We have been fighting over what? Is it water? Is it pasture? Is it other resources? Okay. How best can we share what is available? You see? And that helps in healing, you know, the wounds and trying to bring these people who have perceived each other as enemies together. Mahali is your trauma training meenda. What was our we come zuri kabisa wana kunywa paji maji pamoja hata wana share ile natural resources kila kitu. Hii dawa inatakana ipelekwe kwa pale papote watu wako chini ya miti. Na tumefaidika kwa hiyo na hiyo ikitendeka mimi nafikiri uchugu kuna asia leo hakuna tunamwambia watu hii project aendelee vizuri na walitufunza vizuri na tulipata usaidi usaidizi mwingi kutoka hii watu hii project to the somali communities conflict and pain has for a long time been a way of life however there is a new dawn that is bringing with it the realization that revenge does not in itself bring satisfaction, but instead culminates into more violence. A new world of reconciliation and forgiveness is being born, and a better future is at hand.